guys, Jigs and friggin' Bigs. Here we are, recording live on location. We got uh, myself, who the fuck is Joe Brown? We got the one and only Janelle Orsino uh, as guest host tonight. I am live on location in New Jersey. Joe, all the way back in uh, Massachusetts, we're making this happen in the parking lot of a liquor store in rural southern New Jersey. This ought to be unbelievable. Guys, we will see you. We got a great, great, great show for you. We got a brand new broke on the boat. We're going to be talking about specialty gear. We're going to be talking about all kinds of good stuff that you're going to want to know about. Uh, we also have an FTG uh, a little week late from Matt from Veterans Fishing. And uh, your boy your, your boy caught some fish this week. We got some fish to talk about, guys. Don't go too far. We will be back with much more Jigs and Bigs goodness coming up for you right after this right here. I gotta be totally honest with you. I was most concerned with that segment of the show. I think the rest of this is gonna be smooth sailing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Joe, how you doing, buddy? I am doing awesome. You guys look like you're having a blast. I don't. Can you tell how sunburnt we are? Uh, a little bit, but yeah. I am too. So no, it's all good. I, I was focusing today. I was cycling through wearing a hat and not wearing a hat, so I could kind of even things out a little bit. And then mm-hmm. I was wearing my hood most of today. Um, just curious, Joe, what's the weather like where you're at? Like, what's what was the so, high temp? It was probably like 67, 66 today. It was nice for what we've been having, but uh, it did rain this morning, so... Yep. It was. It was. It wasn't supposed to. And it the, was kind of one of those deals. That sounds so. a lot like the weather we had yesterday. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Today yeah. was different. Right now, and it's cooling down. Right now, it is eighty-one degrees outside. <laughs> That's wild. That's it's, awesome. It's unbelievable. I'm like, you, what's the water temps? <laughs> oh my god, dude! So we launched this morning at uh, the the. It was actually the lake that right near where we're camping. We launched yeah. this morning. And water temps were, what did I say, 58? Mm-hmm. And they got up to 63. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, no, I take that back. Right. They got even, later no, got. when we came in, it was like 67, 68. Yep. Um, Holy shit, that's a big difference. Yeah, it was a huge difference. I was like, you got to be shitting me. This this lake was crazy, though. Super shallow. Uh, dark, dark water. Very tannic. And I assume that that just draws a lot of sunlight and it'll warm up pretty quick. But, yeah. dude, we, we had ourselves a day. Janelle, how are you? How are you enjoying the, the, the fishing with Bobby Rose Beef experience? I am having the time of my life. Yeah? Yes, I absolutely am. She hasn't stopped grinning <laughs> since I pulled up at the launch. No, uh, I haven't stopped grinning since I passed you on the highway. That's right. That's what it was. <laughs> What are the odds? Two jabronis in New Jersey going down 95 happen to go by. I get a phone call from her on the way down, and she's like, hey, the rig looks awesome, man. And she goes, especially because you're right on my right. And I look over <laughs> out my window, and there's Janelle like, hey, what up, homie? <laughs> <laughs> Freaking bananas, man. perfect. Oh, oh, it's been this has been a crazy ass week. This was not I didn't expect this to be a crazy week either. And that I think is is what I I find most interesting. Uh, we're coming down to the final days of the April edition of the multi species scavenger hunt. Um, I was I had a week. We'll talk about that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to mm-hmm. be going. Joe has uh, Joe got out. And, uh, and Janelle got out a couple of times. Yes, I did. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we, we'll go ahead, we'll start with the week in rotation. Um, Janelle, you're our guest, our <laughs> guest co-host. Why don't you jump in and uh, go ahead, tell us about your week. <sighs> well, I guess my week really started Saturday because we had to drive down, well, we had to drive over to Missouri, my wife and I, to uh, swap kayaks out, mm-hmm. which I know you guys heard about this story. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was three days of driving, 17 and a half hours, one way, 17, well, not one way, but, you know, there and back. Mm-hmm. Um, got the new boat, so that was exciting. And then, of course, I had to get it on the water. I didn't even Definitely. install all the knobs and stuff. Bobby's like, your uh, your controller for your rudder looks like it's missing some pieces. I'm like, yeah, they're in the box in the back. I just was too excited, so I just <laughs> launched the boat and went fishing. 
and I did some pre-fishing at the lake that I took you yesterday because yeah. I just wanted to see what was going on, and I caught I caught a fish. So that's good. Yeah. That's good. It's nice to get a little bit of slime in a new boat. Oh, you it know was what I mean. Beautiful. First slime that I got was in Missouri because Soraya, my wife, let me go. Well, didn't let me, but let me fish on a lake for a few hours, and I oh, caught one fish awesome. there. So I caught a bass there, and then I caught another one here. So already, already your first fish and an interstate fish. Oh yeah, not bad, not too bad. Mm-hmm. I can. Uh, I don't know if this is the right button. I'm going to go. I'm using an old recorder here. <laughs> I'm not sure what's what. Um, I hope this is the applause. If it's not, it is. Yeah. All right. All right. It is. <laughs> um, it's, I'm a little rusty, but it's coming back. Um, that's awesome, man. Doing a little pre-fishing now. How was your fishing with the, this weekend with us? Like, how did it go for you? You know. I have been saying life is good this whole trip just yep. because this is exactly what I needed. And this is, I think, what any person who loves adventure and camping and fishing dreams about when they think about going on a trip. The company is incredible. Bobby, you have been amazing, honestly. We've been, you're not the first one to say <laughs> We've been goofing around, but you're very respectable. You're very thoughtful, and yep. it's great. We work well together. And then the fishing and the weather has been right on the money. It's been really good. Like, I can't, I'm, and you, you accomplished your goal. Yeah, yeah, I did. You know what I mean? And like that was the biggest thing for me. I was like, all right, Janelle, you can be a little bit of an alpha sometimes. But I was (laughs) like, let's get Bobby on it. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) and we'll we'll, we'll get there. Uh, We will 100% get there. Yes. Um, So, Joe, how was your your week? So, I was in another training cycle at work. So, my week was complete dog shit with that. (laughs) That sucks, but. Sorry, bro. But I did get on the water today. I uh, brought Jeremiah out, one of my twins, because we are prepping for. He is, I don't know if both the twins are going to do it yet, but he is going to join the uh, scavenger hunt next month with me. Dude, that's awesome. That's exciting. Yeah, so we're both going to do it. So we went out to a uh, a local spot where I actually have a tournament this weekend. Um, Man, what a day we had. We had an awesome day. I mean, we caught a shit ton of crappie, oh, bass. Awesome. I mean, he got his he got a state pin qualifying crappie, his first. Dude, Dude hold that on. So that's for Jeremy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's freaking awesome, dude. That's a so huge he's wicked, deal. Yeah, he's pumped about that. Um we were catching huge crappie today. It was yeah. it was awesome. Like it, yeah, we just fucked around for a little bit and then uh because I, I was just kinda looking at patterns for the bass. Um just with the tournament coming up found one caught some nice ones that i was uh that was pretty pumped about on a ta- technique i'm not going to talk about it now because i don't know who listens to this oh, I got I my tournament it. coming up gotcha <laughs> but uh but it's a technique i never use i never have used and i actually caught my today was catching my first fish on that technique really um so yeah, that's good yeah i was like okay all right um Oh. But dude, I mean, we had I I, I had a huge pike fall, uh, come right to the boat on my uh, on my bait. Didn't grab it. It was on a spinner bait. Just going. Uh, yep. Just didn't want to take it. But I also hooked up to. So I'll, I'll tell you right. What, I mean, my my tournament's on Quay Bog. So uh, yep. we were in the Quay Bog River, Bobby, and uh, oh yeah, okay. I, I hooked into like a four pound brown in the Quay Bog River. Dude, no like, shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. He shook off at the boat. Um, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, <laughs> it's it wasn't something I was expecting to have in there. Because, uh, you know, I mean, you're familiar with it, Bob. It's not supposed to be trout in there. No. But, uh, they, yeah. Well, they but, can get uh, in there, yeah, though. The water gets high enough. I mean. that's the, it's a, He's yeah. coming from uh, from South Pond. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. And that's so a it's big brown. Ever since they built that new bridge, um, there's nothing stopping them anymore so it's weird you're seeing a lot of different shit happen going on in there that's cool um but yeah found a ton of bait fish which was good i kind of saw the pet there that pattern the bass were doing a pattern i wasn't expecting um but i figured it out thank god before this weekend this upcoming weekend nice and uh man we just had a blast we just had a good time today we were out there for probably like four hours and we both got hungry and <laughs> had to go back. That's the bane of my but, uh, existence right there. Snacks. That's yeah, the yeah, one thing yeah. that will get so me off the water bring, fast. We didn't bring any snacky snacks. Um, Come on, guys. But yeah, he's, I, I think I think he's going to do good, man. I think he's going to do good. I think so, month. man. He's, I, that's he's awesome. He's pumped. Cool. I mean, 
I was teaching them how to. Uh, I didn't have my catch board, but you yep. know my boat comes with a little ruler. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Kind of the same idea. Yeah. yeah. The so principles. I was just teaching them kind of how the important. fish had to be. Yep. Yep. I was teaching them how the fish had to be with the mouth closed, you mm-hmm. know, and everything like that. So, yeah, he did it. He. I mean, he. I had him do the photo for um, to send to the state. Oh, that was like his little practice run for yep. the scavenger. Hunt. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. So, yeah, so he did it. I mean, he's nine, so he it's he's he's pumped. He's excited, and uh, I mean, I sent you the picture of the crappie he caught. I mean, big smile on his face. Hell yeah, know. that's awesome. Yeah, you know what? Pumped. I I know I know we said we were gonna put us on the front cover. Okay. I feel like we should put Jeremiah on the front cover. If if he's good with it, I I'm think good with I it. I think that's. <laughs> I'm 100 good. Yeah, with he'll, it. Right. Be, he'll be he'll be stoked. I'd be stoked. honored yeah. to have your son. <laughs> he'll be <laughs> jigs and bigs famous. That's awesome. Yeah, Jer- Jeremiah, I, uh, you know, we'll have to, I, you may have heard some of the stories on the uh, on the show or whatever, but Jeremiah, he's he's an animal. I he mean, he's gone fishing. out ice fishing like me and the hook set hoodlum oh, guys. Yep. He is known as the kid who uh, who got dared by all the guys to bite the head off a shiner, and he oh. did it. And he did it. <laughs> I'm not was, doing uh, that. You know, yeah, that was amazing. Old. Was, that, was that the ice fishing trip, or was that on um, the open house? Oh, because there was a bunch of degenerates there. It might have been <laughs> more than once. Was it a live shiner? Oh yeah! Oh it's, my god! Yeah. No, no, it's no, gotta no, be no, fresh. No, no. It's yeah. gotta I'm be good. fresh, Janelle. I'm yeah, good. he's like, I like sushi, but you know, Wild Bill, <laughs> Wild Bill, <laughs> you know, oh, egging them on. He's so. the worst influence. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, the one I remember was a trip we took on uh, Wickabog when we met yep. up with. Uh, Oh jeez, I'm drawing a blank here. Was it Lockwood and OG Scuba no, Steve? Yeah, yeah, but uh, Jesus, his dad was. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed right now. Sean's friend, kayak fisher. Oh, Nelson. Nelson, was- Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I not for? Rem- I, I, I kept wanting to say Nick. Um. So yeah. So Nelson, we were there when his dad was cooking and everything. And oh, yeah, it was that's tough. right. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. That's a great time to go. And Scuba Steve ate shit on the lake. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, I remember me. hearing about that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. So we had we had a good time today. Um. Nice. Boat worked. Boat was working good. So that's important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. yeah. It's been a rough start to the year with the boat for me. So. Same, um, my brother. I, <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, everything was good. I mean, that was kind of how it was at. I'm off tomorrow, so I might. I do have like some adult shit to do around the house. I've been putting off, but yep. might might just have to find a few minutes to get out there. Yeah, tomorrow. you know, what do you have a lunch break or something? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So six we'll hour see. lunch break. But yeah, that was uh, that was my that was my week. I um, I had I had a week, and I didn't think I was going to have a week. So. To back up a little, a little bit, about a week ago, Janelle and I were planning this trip, and you know, I had told her months ago. I was like, "We got to plan a trip up in the up in the Berkshires. When you get the bus ready, we'll go. We'll send it. It'll be awesome. We'll have ourselves a great time." And uh, it ended up working out where we had chosen a weekend in May to come and fish down here, and then I so I, I booked the the reservations for the state park. All that stuff, it's, it was all good. And then something came up. I had an event to work. It was actually next weekend. I had an event to work, and I was like, I really, I can't, I can't uh, cancel this event. We got to stick with it. So what we opted to do was just to bump it up a weekend. So I changed the reservation, and all was good. So as we're getting into, like, the multi-species scavenger hunt, like, the last week of it, I came into this week at six points, and I have had an amazing month, but, like, I pushed it so hard that one week where I was, like, I was out, like, six days that week. Um, It was intense, and I was like, you know what? I sent it. I had an amazing month. I'm fine with not placing up at the top or whatever. Like, whatever happens, happens. And the, the reason why we were planning this trip was like, hey, come on down here and catch a snakehead. So... I had that to look forward to. That was sort of like in my mind. I'm like, I just want to go out and catch a snakehead. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, Wednesday comes around. Was it Wednesday? No, it was, it was Thursday comes around. And I had nothing really going on that day. 
I had a, a bunch of work stuff Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I had, I had multiple events on Friday, and uh, one of those events was a challenge, um, and I needed to do quite a bit of prep work to make sure it went off without a hitch. So those three days were kind of tied up, handling stuff at home, in the office, making things work, all that stuff. I go out on Thursday, and uh, as I'm driving my youngest to school, I'm like, where do I want to go fish? I mean, I need smallmouth still. I need pike. I was like, do I want to go to the the Berkshires? And I'm like, if I go out there, I got to drive an hour out there. I'm only limited to so much time. And then I got to get back to pick her up. I was like, I kind of just want to catch big fish. Like, I just kind of want to go and catch a big bass. I haven't caught a really big bass uh, this year. Um, you know, anything really like sizable. I missed a, a doozy the day that I caught that huge brown. Um, but I, I haven't had a, a big, big fish on the board, a big largemouth in a while. And I've been sitting on these baits from a company called Magnum Baits, the Beef Craw. I know I talked about them before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm familiar. And what the Beef Craw is for the listeners, they, what the Beef Craw really is, is a, um, it's like a it's a five inch craw. It's more like a lobster. It is enormous, this trailer. And the um the 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 claws, they don't kick like this. They flap almost like like a betta fish would swim. Like it's got a really, really interesting sort of action, you know, when it falls. So I was throwing it on a half ounce jig, one of these uh, blue rock tackle jigs that had come in from last, uh, from from this month's Dark Horse Tackle Box. And uh, this one color in the, in the half inch that I had picked up was uh, PB&J. One of my all time favorite jig colors. I love PB&J. And uh, I was like looking to pair it up with one of the beef craws. And there's a color that I matched it with called medium rare. Medium freaking rare. <laughs> That's the wrong button. That I knew I was gonna do it. That's the wrong button. Medium rare on the beef crawl. You see what would happen. You put put things together. So I'm like, I just want to go and, and throw a jig and see if we can catch a big. Who knows? You know, let's just go and do that. So I went to a local spot that I fish often. Good amount of species. Not really the species aside from yellow perch and rock bass that I'm really necessarily looking for. But again, I kind of put the tournament on the back burner for this, and it's kind of a good thing that I did. I caught three fish that day. The first one that I caught uh, tied the length for my PB. Now, I, I had posted numerous posts about this fish on Instagram and on Facebook, and I've gotten some comments, and I did not get a weight. Let me explain what happened. I went to a spot where the trout guys, you guys know what I mean when I say the fucking trout guys, they were there in full force because the, the trout were not biting. So they were bored. They were talking shit. You know what I mean? And I was all kinds of distracted. Dude. I have been toying around with this backpack from Reaction Tackle over the last couple of months, and I've been using it for bank sends, and I've kind of figured out a way to like incorporate it in the kayak and actually streamline some tackle a little bit, not carry like every, not carry the kitchen sink because I don't really access all the stuff that's in my bag. So I'm going to do some modifications with that and, and, and tweak some stuff. And I've been using this backpack, and I'm in love with it. It is great. I forgot it in the truck. So I went out there only with the baits that were tied on to the rods that I had. So I'm like, oh, no, that and I had two packs of beef craws in two different colors, the medium rare. And then uh, I think the other one that I liked was the uh, black and blue green pumpkin. And I'm like, all right, cool. We'll go ahead. We'll send it. Well, I didn't need anything else. That was the only thing that, uh, I mean, they were just hammering it. So what's interesting about this. So when I posted that, I didn't know the weight it very well. And I do think it definitely broke the weight of my previous PB. The last 22 that I had was caught on. And here's the crazy thing about this fish. I caught that first PB uh, the, or I caught my, my previous PB on April the 25th of 2021. I was fishing with Chris Dabari. I know that date because it's my wedding anniversary. Three years to the day, I got another 22. And this fish was like a football. So those of you guys that have seen the pictures on uh, on Instagram, this fish was huge. It was just giant. Um, 
I did also reconsider some of the ways I'm taking some fish pictures because I could barely get this fish in the frame with me. That was kind of tough. Um, but, you know, live and learn. We're going to make it work. And uh, this was absolutely awesome. Release of fish. Go. I caught another two. Um, the first one, much smaller. And uh, the second one was a dink. Like a dink, dink. And I'm a little surprised that it went even went after the beef craw. But the th interesting thing about this catch is that Something happened that I don't see all that often when I'm fishing um, and I'm, I'm flipping up into submerged timber. I happen to throw this jig up to a spot. And you know, like when you spook a bunch of bait fish, they just kind of scatter and go crazy. I cast it right into that and that big fish just chomped it. And I've always kind of thought, I'm like, now that those bait fish that were there could have easily been lunch you know, for this big bass. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I'm like, well, this is just absolutely unbelievable. And it, it kind of reminded me of when I, like I saw that trout jump and I just took a, 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 you know, the week previous, I just took a chance and I, I launched a micro jig over to that, where those ripples were. And I hooked up with a, a rainbow trout that I needed for the derby. So I was like, all right, cool. This is awesome. I, I got, a, I got this giant fish on here. I was like, this is my day was made. Absolutely freaking made. Um, you couldn't bring me down, you know. And at trivia that night, some people tried. Some people actually tried to bring me down. Um, but something interesting that is fishy related. And uh, I want to when I was at trivia. There was uh, a regular um, that's been actually playing trivia with me for years, and uh, for a while she worked at one of the venues where I, I used I hosted trivia previously, and uh, she comes walking a big smile on her face. She's like, "Bobby, I've got something that you, you need to see." And so she was telling me, her name's Chelsea, and she went out fishing with her boyfriend Spencer, and she caught her first largemouth, man. And I was stoked for her. I was like, that is amazing. She's like, yeah, she's like, I rigged a Senko, and this is how I did it. And I was, it was awesome. Like, so I'm so stoked. I love hearing when new people are getting out doing some fishing and stuff. And then I said to her, I was like, hey, Chelsea, you want to see the fish I caught today? And she was just like, fuck you, Bobby Roast Beef. <laughs> so, uh, but I had to share. I have so little in life. I have to lean on that a little bit. You know what I mean? So Thursday was a good day. Uh, Friday was super busy. I was all over the place. Um, have you guys noticed a lot of raccoons? Like, uh, just anywhere and everywhere? I, I, I have not, I but have not I get them either. at my house constantly. So. so I was in, like, just outside of Boston. Like, just outside, like, like just hot off a of 93 in Chelsea doing this yeah. event. And I needed to park my car in kind of a weird area. And this was at, like, 1.30 in the afternoon. Just a fat old raccoon just walking across the parking lot <laughs> under somebody's car. And I'm like, you've got rabies. You know, <laughs> I'm like, you should not be out at this time of day. So we're going to stay good and clear of you. Yeah. And then on the drive down, I saw like 20 dead raccoons all, oh, all no along shit. like 95. Yeah, I was like, what is going on? Dang. So it was uh, it was interesting. I'm like, eh, it is what it is. Did both of my events, um, left my last event, went to the storage unit, unloaded all my work gear, loaded up all my camping stuff, got home, and uh, my wife, the absolute goat, she ordered pizza, and I was famished. <laughs> I hadn't eaten all day, so I was stoked. I went to bed with a full belly, and uh, I woke up first thing hit the road and here i am now i got directions initially we were going to meet at the campsite you know meet at the at the at the campground mm -hmm. and then go from there and janelle goes you know it probably makes more sense for us just to just a fish first you know let's just go ahead and send it give it a, give it a good fucking send it's like all right makes that's sense. a good idea so she sends me a pin to the uh, to the ramp we get down there and we take off and you know conditions when we were there were like ideal it was uh, mm -hmm. a little bit chilly i mean i say a little bit chilly chilly compared to now it wasn't 80 degrees it was like sure. i was like 58 60 something mm -hmm. like that i mean mm -hmm. it was fine and uh, i was wearing a, a thermal base layer top with uh, a hoodie and mm -hmm. um get out in the water i had uh i disconnected my battery for some reason i think i wanted to charge it and we got on the water and i'm like oh my graph's not working i wonder if i left my graph on overnight and it drained my battery mm -hmm. nope it was disconnected i i had it today so no idea what the water temps were exactly where we were but i would venture to say they were low 50s uh okay. probably you know i would venture to say it's probably a safe yeah, uh, assessment say, that's a safe call on that and the watercolor there was, um, the visibility was hot shit. It was garbage. <laughs> it was like, you know what it was? It was baby diarrhea green. 
weird stuff. Oh, Jesus. That's what the color was. And it, <laughs> okay, had the, right. it had the same kind of visibility. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Same le- I'm sorry, listeners, if you're having breakfast or something, but hey, I got to be real. <laughs> it was <laughs> absolutely fucking disgusting. And I think we were out there for maybe 10 minutes, and I landed that first largemouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And remember, this year, Joe, I said, I was like, I'm going to give the 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 uh, some real effort into throwing chatterbaits. Right. Everything about the condition screamed bladed jig to me yeah. or spinnerbait. And yeah. actually, coming up in an upcoming episode, we're going to have Matt Thayer on with us. And we're going to talk okay. about how to differentiate what's what, because I'm still confused as fuck. I need some help. Me too. Um, <laughs> so I'm throwing around the, um, the Z-Man EVO. Um, yeah. and I, I kind of love those. I, re- I really kind of do. Like I haven't I, thrown one yet. I, man, I'm telling you, like I'm a Picasso guy. I love those, but Me they too. do the job, man. They do all right. I'm, I'm very happy with them. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I caught this first bass. I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, I think within another like 10 or 20 minutes, I hook into a, a second. Um, mm-hmm. Did totally flub the hooks out there because I was fishing a spot where there was a lot. Of, in this area in three weeks, is going to be you're going to need a frog. Because yeah, it's just sure. pads that are subsurface right now, mm-hmm. and right. they're not, uh, you know, clogging up the top. So I'm, 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 you know, running this chatterbait through there. I get hung up. I'm ripping it. I'm ripping it. I get this big on, and I'm like, oh yeah, baby. I just must have like, <laughs> skin hooked him or something. Yeah, yeah. Because he right at the boat, just like, just I like disconnect. Like it was almost like he was holding on to the bait and was like, bye, bitch, and just <laughs> left me. Yeah, and it was so <laughs> fucking weird. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I know this. Is, I'm like, okay, two. That's a pattern. We're sticking with this. It's going to be fine. Within minutes, I hear something out deep in the middle. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I flip that chatterbait into that area just past where I see the, the ripples. And I start dragging what do it you through mean there. You hear something. I, I hear something breach the surface of the water, like okay. a, a splash. Like, you know what I mean? Like sticking an ear in the water. And- he heard a dog bark and he just flipped his lure that way. Oh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I flip this over there and it gets hit so hard. And I'm like, that's a big. That's a real big. I'm like, holy shit. So I start fighting this fish and it is just going ape shit. Le- legitimately, I thought I hooked into a beaver. I, I really did. I thought I hooked into some kind of like a, a, a an aquatic animal oh, uh, of sort and I was it was I was gonna have a mess on my hands. I had a bigger mess on my hands. Because, ladies and gentlemen, listening to Jigs and Bigs, your boy caught a, what, 24 and a half inch snakehead Woo! in New Jersey within within the first 30 minutes of being on the water. Mission fucking accomplished. So proud of you. Um, I recorded some video. I was literally shitting myself. The whole time. Yeah, I was like, I don't even know how the hell this is going to happen. I was like, Janelle... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you want to come over and see this? I had it. I saw it in the net. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" At one point, Joe, this yeah. fish jumped out of the net. Yep, I believe it. Got back in the water, and I just immediately just cracked that. But here's the thing: that that snakehead choked the chatterbait. That chatterbait gone. Yep, they know they're known for that. It's right. bent, that hook bent out so bad. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, geez. I know. So, heartbreaker. A <laughs> little bit of a heartbreaker here, too. So, we catch this, and I'm like, this is invasive. Like, I'm supposed to not release it, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, Janelle's like, yeah, yeah. You, you know, she's, I was like, catch and cook. Let's do it. So, we go uh, we go back to the bank because I didn't have my stringer on me. I just bought this brand new chain stringer for when I'm out and I'm harvesting, mm-hmm. like stalkers and yeah. stuff. And yeah, we I, talked about it last week. Yeah, I left it in the fucking truck like a total amateur. <laughs> you no knife. Oh. No knife. <laughs> yeah, no, no knife. Like we were both I, like, oh. I, I normally have a knife that I keep on my my uh, my my PFD Same. so I can take it and like you know and, and bleed out a fish if I need to. And I'm like, I got none of this stuff. I was like, I got a net and a dream. That's it. <laughs> So I got the Just shoot it. fish on the grips. So no, what we did is we kept it in the net, and we we paddled we pedaled our way back to the back to the launch. Went back yep, over. Yep, I went yep. to go. I went to go grab my knife. The knife is a folding knife, and it's busted. Yeah. It won't stay open. <laughs> oh gosh! 
but I have a giant Bowie knife that I keep in the back of the truck, and I use it for uh, batoning, like when cutting wood, processing wood, because it's yeah, huge yeah. and it's sharp, yeah. and I can use, you know, I, uh, I I went Rambo on this fish when bled him out, bled him out yeah. good, put the uh, him on the stringer, got him back, and uh, you know we're like let's keep fishing, let's keep going. Now I knew I could I could I could I could sense Janelle's anxiety in this. <gasps> How is this? How how I can't I can't get skunked on my own water when I'm fishing with Bobby Rose Beef. I can't. And uh, she lit him up. She she got on him uh, shortly thereafter. And I I actually totally made an entire switch. I caught the target species I wanted. I grabbed that BFS and I just started fishing after that. <laughs> we left the the launch. And how many minutes would you say it was? Two. White perch. Point number two, <laughs> point number fucking two. I didn't even know they were in that body of water. I didn't know they were yeah, in that body yeah. of water. I fished it my whole life. At at first, I thought that fish was another bluegill, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, we'll, we'll live with it. We'll deal. It's going to be fine. Right. I I lay into this fish, and I I get it in the net. I was like, holy shit! And then I was like, it's not going to make the eight inch minimum. It barely made the eight inch minimum, but a point's right. a point. God damn it! <laughs> so now I'm up at eight points, and I'm tied. There's like a four way tie, and it is just. It is bananas. I, I cannot believe it. It has been absolutely nuts. I have so many fish that I need to judge, and uh, we're going to be uh, at, by the campfire at, crushing some drinks and uh, smoking a little Zaza, and then uh, I'm going to be judging fish. Oh, yeah. That's my plan for tonight. Um, dude, so it happened. We we I, I was like, holy shit. So the snakehead, the white perch was just an absolute bonus. Janelle got on some fish. And uh, and then it was it was all good. In fact, there was a weird situation where Janelle was casting up some some of the ponds around here that I've noticed have really nice looking features, like man made okay. features, like little bridges and things like that yeah. that kind of go over the creeks that might extend out. And this one area she had cast in and got snagged, and for the life of us, we could not figure out what the hell she was possibly snagged on. No idea. Like this sure. thing seemed like it was a bottomless pit that went to like the eighth layer of hell. And I was using like a, a mini max chatterbait. Did not it die wasn't that huge. deep. Like I don't understand. Yeah, how. no, it does not make any sense. It doesn't. So um, we go and we fish a bit more, and it's at this point now the wind had kind of picked up, and the temperature took a little bit of a turn, and I think that's when the bite sort of died. Absolutely, like it did. got a little bit okay. chilly, and uh, we decided we'd, we'd go ahead and send it. I was like, all right, well, let's get out of here, and we'll go grab some provisions because I needed stuff for the catch and cook and everything. Right. Spoiler alert: when we did get to the. Um, campsite and we got everything all set and we started filleting this fish this fucking snakehead was full of worms parasites oh. like a motherfucker yeah. and the last thing I wanted to do was ruin today's day of fishing by eating that fish yeah. yeah, you know you what I mean. So yeah. yeah, we put the carcass back into the water, and we're like, "All right, there we go." Um, Let nature do its thing. It was yeah. a different fucking pond, <laughs> <laughs> but also, it was let nature do its thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, I mean, you know, we saw plenty of like ospreys like flying around. Oh, eagle. There's a bald eagle, eagle that we saw oh today. God, so like some one of those ate well, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, when I when it started filleting this fish, I was just like, "Oh no." No. Yeah. You see all the specks, and then you start looking at them, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, those are fucking worms. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was no good. Um, we we had a little bit of an adventure finding our, our, our campsite. The, the confirmation email I received gave an address, which was, what was it, 12 miles away yeah. from mm -hmm. the actual campground. We get to the address, and it's a state park, and it's closed. They close at 4 o'clock. It doesn't tell me any of this stuff. It says I can check in at noon on the and that's it. Well, I'm like, well shit, what are we gonna do? So I start looking at the campground map and I'm like, well, we're staying on this lake. Let's go ahead and look. So I look at that and I kind of figure out figure it took us like three different tries to actually like nail it down what side of the lake we were on and everything. But we got it. We got there at like eight o'clock. Um Backing the trailer in at this tiny little campground uh, campsite was a challenge, yeah. but we did it. Mm -hmm. Nothing, n no, uh, no bloodshed, nothing like that. Um, shout out to what's the dude's name that's selling the firewood? Is it Keith? I don't know his name. I don't know his name. Let's give him a name. Keith. Keith. We'll call him Keith. <laughs> Keith, 
you're you're a real one. A legend. A man. legend. Yeah. Uh, firewood, five dollars a bundle, which mm-hmm. is just amazing. Absolutely. And it's great. It's very well seasoned. Like he takes care of his okay. shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I don't know why you're doing. Do you just hate trees? <laughs> And you're doing, you're not making a profit. I don't get it, but I mean, it is good stuff. So we had a great fire last night. Uh, we ended up having, uh, we made a little charcuterie board with some various meats and cheeses, some okay. jams and some bread. We had a good time, a couple of tasty beverages, and uh, a little bit of that uh, apple fritter zaza. Mm-hmm. And it was just, dude, we had such a great time. It was awesome. Um, it poured overnight, <laughs> absolutely poured overnight. Um, I think we got like almost just under a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Of, like uh, that. Yeah, it was it, it was rough. So it, it was it was dumping on us. Um I, I only think I fell asleep about like two thirty in the morning. We got up kind of late because lately all of my good fishing has been after eleven AM. Um but I think we're right on the point where that's going to turn as this weather starts to kind of ch- switch up on us. So I'm I'm out doing my thing, you know, uh, I get up, uh, we get everything together. We're on the water shortly after we got up yeah which was nice Mm -hmm. sent it today and um you know janelle was lighting them up (laughs) and we found out what the pattern was today if you put your baits in the water Mm -hmm. they'll bite them that was about all it took janelle was throwing around like i like almost like a what was it i forget the the name like a, a small spook yeah like a spook junior you know uh, mm-hmm. And and she was crushing them, pickerel, bass, pickerel and bass, primarily. Pickerel and right? bass, those were my two. And uh, and I managed to get on four different fucking species. Uh, That's awesome. It was it was crazy. So I caught a couple of gills. I caught one bass, one largemouth. I threw BFS all day today because I was looking for that yellow perch. Really, um, did not catch it. I caught two crappie, one nice size crappie, and then uh, all the rest were chain pickerel. And it was just a variety of different. You know, BFS presentations, like ultralight stuff, Bronco blades, and uh, I was throwing uh, a micro jig for a while, like a swim jig, and they were crushing that. The wind was up and down. It was either dead calm or it was blowing pretty good, and it was just stop and go. We started out, we had some cloud cover, skies opened up. It was just, it just didn't matter, and I was talking actually with with Sean the Fisherman, and uh, he was like, dude, I think this week is just going to be a good week because it's the week of the full moon. Yeah. And... I think the week of the full moon was actually, or what am I saying? I think the full moon was actually Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. I think I think it was Wednesday. Mm. And, uh, man, it was just awesome. Like, it was just freaking awesome. So, um, oh, by the way, speaking of Sean, yep. Saturday, I got a text from Sean, mm-hmm. and he also caught a 22 largemouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was out. No shit. Good yeah. Nice he got job. an absolute tank, too. And he was like, holy shit. He's like, I'm telling you, man. He's like, it just must be, this must be the week for the big girls. You know, they're going out. I want to catch one on a swim I, bait so bad. It's, <laughs> it's bananas. <laughs> on man. a what? Like a glide bait. Like a yeah, six or yeah. seven or eight inch. I don't have any confidence in it, but I've had it tied on the last two days. It'll happen. Yeah. yeah it's just these lakes, like you said, so shallow yep. that there's no there's no work in that bait. That's so. exactly it. Yeah. And you know, like and where we were, it was just it was everything pickerel love. And I mean it's New Jersey. Like I've heard I looked on fish brain at this lake that we were fishing at, and the number one species by by far was chain pickerel. Yeah. And then yeah. we went we went to a, a package store today. But you don't know what a package store is, do you? No. It's a liquor store. <laughs> gotcha. Dude, you know, you know you know what else Janelle doesn't know about? If what? you said Keith Smith or whatever Kevin, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Kevin yeah. Smith. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to there's gonna be some education there. Yeah. I think we're gonna, if I can, I'll download Chasing Amy. We'll watch that around the campfire. Maybe. You'll like it. It's good. Um so we it, it was just it was awesome. So um and and what what's interesting, this uh this guy? Yeah, that guy. Okay, I know who he is. All right. That package <laughs> store um, is running a pickerel tournament. Like they what? Have, yeah, you know those old school signs with like the individual letters they put up, like they have forever, yeah. and it's usually got an arrow with lights pointing in somewhere. Yeah, They've got yeah, one yeah. of those, and it's like pickerel tournament, May 11th. So I asked the dude about it, and he seemed like he would know about a pickerel tournament. Younger guy, <laughs> Bass Pro hat, Folded in a way in the at the at the brim that made me think he knew a thing or two about a very specific 
lure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it was just, dude, it was just so much fun, man. We had a good time. So thank you, Janelle. Cool. I appreciate you taking my ass out and getting me on a snakehead. And it was absolutely freaking. And I get this thing in the in the, in the the net, and she's like, that's not even a big one. No. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's not even a big one. <laughs> it, dude, no, I'll it was a I'll nice one. I'll be 100% honest. I didn't know, like, I didn't even know New Jersey had them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're. I mean, they're coming up, man. They are. They're invasive. Yeah, know. You know, it's I like know. I've heard. What was it like a year or two ago? I heard some rumors that somebody in Mass had caught one, and then you yeah. get the whole like they're not up here, they're not up here, and you never know. Yeah. Somebody might have caught a bofin and have been like doy. You know, I, rem- I think I remember that. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a tough call, but yeah, we just we sent it and uh, and it was it was awesome. I'm stoked. I I am stoked with the my uh performance in the multi-species scavenger hunt so what i want to do is is as we kind of transition in here um we're uh, let's go ahead and do this go over the results of the scavenger hunt these are the unofficial results of the scavenger hunt what it looks like right now again this is we're recording this on what is today the 28th I think it's the twenty yep. eighth. Yes. So we still have a couple of days. Things can happen, but this is where we are uh, as far as the points are concerned. You know, we still have to go over a few details. I'm going to start actually at the bottom and just go through everybody to just kind of figure out what we. So we have thirty five anglers who entered, twenty eight anglers entered fish, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. You guys are absolute freaking killers. It's great. Um, 28 anglers entered fish. Um, we've got some young folks. We've got some older folks in here. Uh, so starting out, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven way tie with one point. Uh, we've got Robert Williams, Josh Welch, Timothy Smith, Jenna Boudry, Jimmy Gallahan, Peter Pelletier, and Becca. Rebecca Yassin all at one point right now they entered fish congratulations guys good job we have a a one two three four way tie with uh, two points each Uh, we have Josh Belancher Sam Cruz the third Hunter Cummins uh, Janelle's in there Uh, and then at three points we have a three way tie Robbie Munier Timmy Bender Steven Gonzalez four Mm -hmm. points a two way tie Timmy Jakes, topless Timmy Jakes, and the one and only Cheryl Bentley, four points each. Six points, he's another one, two, three, four-way tie. Binny Outdoors, Chrissy Radwillowitz, a.k.a. Uh, Chrissy Fishing, Norm Wilmot. Norm Wilmot caught some good good fish, too. I, I, was, I was going through some of his fish. I was like, nice job. We were tied up for quite a while. And then Brody Davis. Brody Davis at uh, at six points. Nice job. And Brody, Brody's got a pickerel, a sunfish, a rainbow trout, a bullhead, a yellow perch, and a largemouth. Like, dude, and we're kids, talking kids and animal. Nice he is job, an animal. dude. Brody is what twelve, thirteen? Stop. No, he's yeah, he's uh, I believe he's not quite thirteen. Yeah, I want to say he's eleven or twelve. Eleven or twelve. Like a, That's crazy. He's like dude, a year. I think he's like a year older. Than and he is so into this. I I, I love it. I I yes. love that enthusiasm. You know, and I think like I think Jeremiah is gonna have a blast. I really do. I, uh, he's yeah, he's pumped. I, I'm thinking maybe maybe we do some kind of like a a youth award for somebody who is under 16 or under yeah. 18 yeah, that'd be good. you know whoever whoever's the top person under that gets like an extra maybe we'll talk to dark horse tackle and maybe we'll do like yeah. a dark horse youth bonus or something like that yep 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 that, yeah, that might be kind of cool I- I could talk to um, Taylor from Fisher Die. Too. Yeah, that could be pretty awesome. Maybe we'll put together a little basket. Uh, maybe May will be kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yep. So then we get up. There are no seven point fish, or there are no seven point entries. We have a tie uh, in, at eight points. Your your boy Bobby Roast Beef at eight points, and and what did Bobby Roast Beef enter? Did I just clear the leaderboard? No, I didn't. Oh. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Rose Beef put in a crappie, a brown trout, a pickerel, a white perch yesterday, a sunfish, a rainbow trout, a snakehead, and a largemouth. Mm. I was the only snakehead the entire... I think I'm the first snakehead, maybe, for the series. I'll have to ask Sean about that. Mm. We've had tons of bowfin. I don't know if we've had somebody put a snakehead in yet. I, yeah, I can't off the top of my head remember yeah. anyone submitting a snakehead. It's because we didn't go back to our spot at, yeah, today. Go, go today. <laughs> ah, there you go. Um, and then, you know who I'm tied with at eight points? 
the, 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 the man who has created his own unique lifestyle, gravy. Gravy fishing and I are tied up. And gravy, sure. gravy's got a crappie, a pickerel, a sunfish, a tiger trout. Nice job, yeah, gravy. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got a rainbow. He's got a yellow perch, a smallie, and a largemouth. Nice job, gravy. Mm. We we got a little three way tie in uh, at nine points. Uh, Daniel Sudo Jr., Todd Sefton, and Stephen Galloway, um, all like absolute hammers. This is where things get really interesting. We've got a tie right now in second place between Kevin Mahoney and John Hagens. They're tied at eleven points. Okay. Saturday morning, I think I checked the standings, and it was John Hagens and Tim Behan tied at 11 points. Tim Behan has stolen first place for himself right now, unofficially, until oh, I go shit. through and do everything. Yeah, and Tim Behan's got a brown trout, a pickerel, a white perch, a sunfish, a tiger trout, a rainbow, a carp, a bullhead, a yellow perch, a smallie, a largemouth, and a brookie. Goodness. Yeah, Tim. Tim's putting in the work. I mean, John. Let's look at John Higgins. And I, I would have bet money weeks ago that like John, John. And you know, like I said, there's still a couple of days. John could go and hammer it, but he's got some interesting, you know, interesting catches as well. He's got a crappie, a brown, uh, a rock bass, a sunfish, a walleye, a carp, a bullhead, a smallie, a channel cat, a largemouth, and a blue catfish. My goodness. Mm. Kevin Mahoney's got a crappie, a pickerel, a white perch, a rock bass sunfish, uh, a rainbow trout, a bullhead, a yellow perch, smallie, largemouth, and a brookie. Just freaking unbelievable. You guys all, like, you should be very, very proud of yourselves. It has been nuts. And it's just starting. We got May coming up, and then in June, we've got another one, but we also have the Slot Limit Challenge that's coming up at the end of yep. June. That's well, going to be amazing. That's the Bass Numbers Tournament. It's going to be freaking awesome. I'm stoked about it. So, Bobby, before we get ahead and start talking about those yeah. ones, I'm going to put you in the beef seat for a second. Oh, okay. So, what's your next species that you're going for? Pike. Big Pike. Big Pike? <laughs> yep. Big Pike. Uh, probably not going to be able to swing it this month, but yeah. So... Okay, so for this, this oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Sorry, the twenty eighth. Never mind. Yeah, I was like no, I mean, no, I meant for this month. I'm thinking if it's if if what? Uh, there's thirty days. There's two more days. Yeah. There's two more days. I might be able to get out on Tuesday. Um, Monday is going to be crazy because I'm going to be on the road, and then I've got to prep everything for a trivia. I've got to yeah. edit the show. Monday's yeah. going to be really tight for me. Um, I might get out on Tuesday. I'm probably going to send it to up the shears and I'm just going to give it a go. I'm actually yeah. going to talk to my daughter and see if she can pick my youngest up from school so I can yeah. stay out there and go right from trivia. Um, I got to give it a shout out again to my dad. Like He has inspired me so much with this trailer. I have been dropping this thing in and going from whatever spot I want. It has made life so much simpler. That winch is just killer. Yeah. Absolutely cool killer. It's simple, but it's effective. Yeah. And then you can build on it, which is great. And that, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So um, before we go and wrap things up, I want to give you guys a little teaser of what we have coming up next in the show. So this week, uh, we have a, uh, a special Just the Tip by Janelle. She's going to go ahead and advise. So you guys have a little bit of feedback. That's coming up uh, in our next segment, as well as we've got Matt from Veteran Veterans Fishing did call in his FTG, and uh, we've got that going on, so you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, uh, broke on the boat. This is going to be only a two segment show, guys. Um, we don't have a guest this week. I'm working on. So I actually have uh, Nick Deshane from uh, Dark Horse Tackle Pro Staff on the schedule to, uh, later in May. So he's coming up soon. That's going to be awesome. Um, but I got a question. Or I saw a question on. Was it Fish Brain? Yeah, I think it was Fish Brain. And somebody had put a post up, and it was. Uh, I think I sent you the screenshot, Joe, too. Um, yep. And it was basically like, should I buy this specific, this technique specific combo? And there was a handful of comments in there, and I, I commented and I said, "Hey, is it cool if I talk about this on the show?" And I got the or, or, original poster did like it, so I'm like, "We're gonna go for it. We're gonna talk yep. about technique specific stuff." And that's coming up in our next segment, guys. You're right. you're not gonna want to miss it. Let's go ahead and uh, do we have any, is Joe? Am I forgetting anything? Or are we good? No, man, I think I that's think it. Good. I, I think mean, we're good. What a great, what it's awesome like, hearing about you guys this week. I mean, Bobby killed it. 
I'm jealous. It's April has been insane this month. Like yeah, it has been insane, crazy. and uh, I, I'm stoked. I, I'm I, on all fronts. You know, uh, yep. fooling around with those big trailers. My theory seems to be working, um, yeah. and then also like I'm feeling good about bladed jigs, man. As a as a go to search bait, you know. Love it. It's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing. Yeah, blade baits. I or bladed jigs. I have a pretty yep. good confidence in those, but. Once we go on, but once we go on a quick break here, yep. I'll tell you what I'll tell you what oh, I got. Uh, that there, that finally caught. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I did. I, I do want to throw this out there. That chatterbait that I was throwing, uh, I was using as a trailer. I, I picked up a bunch of chatter spikes to try them out, and I realized something about them. I don't like them because storing them them is a pain in the ass, and not storing them like by themselves on the jig. Like if I cut it off to put something else on that rod. It's it's it sucks because I have to take the trailer off. You know what I mean? It's yeah. going to melt in the box. Um, and I, I think those skirts also react with the uh, the, the plastics themselves, with the Elastec. Yep. So I was at, I know we talked about this last week, but I was over at Richard's Sporting Goods. And I needed a couple of things. Like I needed to pick up that stringer and I needed a couple of items for catfishing that I needed to pick up. And I opted to get some Crush City baits, the freeloaders. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Talk about that. Yep. Dude. Yep. Um, yeah, I like them a lot. <laughs> I like do them you? a whole lot. I really do. Um, you know, it's. I'm. I'm hearing a. I'm actually hearing a lot of good shit about Crush City, man. They're. I they're mean, really. I mean, it's. It's Rapala, dude. It's. It's. Yeah. It, that, it's funny because Jacob Wheeler has a ton of haters, man. And uh-huh. uh, but no, these are these are baits. I'm hearing are pretty fucking decent. That's what I'm saying, dude. And and like. I'm not sure. Are you a Rapala or a Rapala guy? Which way do you go? And you've worked as a retailer. You would know. Rapala. Rapala. You go Rapala. Really? I go Rapala. No shit. Okay. Okay. That's good. I think the actual term is supposed to be Rapala, though. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Because I hear both. But I'm Um, like, I'm like, nah, man. Fuck it. I'm I'm sticking to what I've always What if we're all fucking wrong and it's something really dark? Well, they should have corrected it (laughs) by then. They're a big enough fucking company. They, are, they could have corrected but it. Aren't they like Swedish? I don't the know. R is silent. The R, yeah. Apollo. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no. If, Apollo. Yeah. <laughs> they should have corrected it by now if uh, if there was yeah, an issue. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. They're they don't. Them. No. They don't give a true. shit. They've been that's they've true. been selling baits forever. But I'll tell you what, dude. In the plastics game, like they're they're solid they're they're solid i like the color selection um there's two that i picked up that i really like that i'll keep in i'm going to keep that to myself um although i did share with you that technique and Mm -hmm. it's been working man i like this i like this i like playing around colors the world is a carousel of color let's go ahead we'll take a short break we're going to come back guys you don't want to miss it more jigs and bigs goodness coming up with janelle's just the tip You don't want to miss it. We'll see you in a bit. Don't go too far. Jigs and Bigs wants to take a moment to say thank you to our partners for helping us continue to push the limits of our fishing adventures and bring you amazing long-form podcast content. We need to thank Dark Horse Tackle, Omnia Fishing, A Bay Lure, The Bay House, and The Ship Motel. We can't forget about Three Bells Outfitters, Torres Sunglasses, and of course, Reaction Tackle. Be sure to check the description of this podcast for any associated affiliate links or promo codes they've generously provided our listening audience. Again, we cannot thank our partners enough for their support. Please consider supporting them and supporting the show in the same process. Thanks. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one with the impeccable taste in fishing podcasts. Bobby Rose Beef here with a little call to action for all Jigs and Bigs listeners. We're opening up our hotline to you. Now you can call us to sound off about almost anything at 413-324-8519. Want to submit someone for our FTG segment? Call us at 413-324-8519. Care to maybe suggest a topic for just the tip or bait of the week? Call us at 413-324-8519. Maybe you just want to give us or anyone else a little shout out on the show. Or you want to suggest a guest for the beef seat. 
You guessed it. Call us at 413-324-8519. The Jigs and Bigs Hotline is there for you to leave a message with us 24-7. Just call 413-324-8519. Also, you can check that number in the notes of this podcast. Perhaps play a little game called Just a Tip. Just for a second, just to see how it feels. Or, ouch, ouch, you're on my hair. Okay. All righty. I forgot. I forgot that that we changed that open. Um, and that's just interesting. It's fun. I liked it. Yeah, it was good stuff. So, just the tip this week. I I have been on a a, a tear, especially when you have a guest co host with us. To just kind of give them the floor and get some feedback. Um, you know, unless we have something that's like just burning hot that we can throw out there. This way, the listener kind of gets a new perspective. And I think that that's a good thing. So, Janelle being our guest co host, we're going to give her the floor and let her give us her tip for this week. What do we have? Well, thank you, Bobby. It's a pleasure being here. So, my tip for the week has to do with your layers and apparel mm-hmm. because. It's, I think it's the biggest tip or a piece of advice that my dad ever gave me is that you can always take layers off, but you can't put layers on. That's sun protection, rain protection, mm-hmm. or hot or cloth, uh, cold clothing. Yep. So for me, this trip, we had some chilly weather last night. Yeah. And it is very opposite of today. Today, we're in the 80s. Last night, we were chilly, cold, beanies, hoodies. Yeah. And we were prepared, or at least I was prepared for that. Options. Kind of options that are modular that work well with everything Mm -hmm. which i think is like super important especially camping hiking fishing you just want to be prepared oh i agree yeah i think that's why that's a great tip thank you um i think it's 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 perfect because um and i think one of the things that, that folks need to think about when they're thinking about layers too is is not just like like what the temperature is but also when you're talking about being on a boat actually on the water like you want the right material. Yes. You know what I mean? You want you don't want to have cotton or anything like that. I mean, honestly, to be perfectly honest, if you're out doing anything, you want to stay away from cotton-based materials as much as you can because if you do perspire, it's going to absorb it and then lose any insulation qualities that it does have. So, synthetics or like wool, you know, as a layer, and I know people think that that's crazy, but like when it's when it's really cold, like when I'm doing a bank send uh, and I'm, you know, hiking all over the place, like trying to get a bite in some next to some river, you know, the only water that's not frozen. I'm wearing like a full synthetic base layer, wool socks, Merino wool socks so that they're thin, but they're they're warm. Mm-hmm. I wear an insulated boot. And then on top of that, I wear a pair of usually I wear a pair of jeans, but those jeans have some like spandex, like synthetic polyester material in them. Uh, and then, you know, I'm, sh- dude, even TMI, but even my underwear is oh, yeah. like performance underwear, you know? Same. Underwear you know, or? The lady says it's always a performance, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you a whitey tighties kind of guy? Uh, no, 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 no. Underwear. No, no underwear. Uh, I, I like a, a like a, a, what's the material? What, what the hell do they call it? Like a polyester type, mm-hmm. um, a poly boxer brief. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm the same way. Yeah. Oh my god! We're all boxer brief buddies. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yay! I love it. Yeah. No, those t- tidy whities are no good. No, 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 good. no. no. Nobody and then wants that. you know, so by having that layer, you'll just be more comfortable overall. And you know, one of the things that I try to do is to regulate my temperature. So like, I'll yeah. go from that to like this T-shirt that I'm wearing right now, this very fashionable T-shirt from Hookset Hoodlums. This is a performance shirt, and I I, I put this on as like one of the first things. And I'll put something on top of it. And if I have to, like a hoodie. But if it gets warm, I can take that off. You saw today I put a hoodie on the back of the... I was like, I don't know that I'm going to need this. But maybe I will. And I was smart enough to pack a light hoodie for today, which worked out perfectly. One of those sun shirts with a hood and the the gator and everything. Clearly, I think... There's got to be a shelf life on the sun protectant for those garments. There has to be. I would love to know. I feel like you you noticed on the back of my head being like very full of just red yeah. like and i'm like i wasn't going without a hat very long and you know i know that the, the hat is mesh 
But I'm, I had the hood on most of the day, and I'm wondering if maybe it's time to replace some of these things. That's actually a good thing that, it's, to really consider. Yeah. It's funny, because I remember, fuck, I remember, I forget what tournament it was, but, you know, I wait for my tournaments, I wear a jersey mm-hmm. for, like, all my sponsors, supporters, whatever. And I remember the sun was so hot, it burnt me through that jersey. That's what I'm saying. One day. I wonder. Like I mean, granted, I'm Irish. My skin. I mean, I this this friggin' light um in my face is probably gonna it's going to give you a right sunburn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but See, I couldn't. I was like, I remember getting home, taking my jersey off, and just being like, I felt like I was in the fucking twilight zone. I'm like, how did this happen? I don't remember putting my sleeves up or anything today. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and I wonder if like maybe that SPF starts to like wear out after washes and stuff yeah yeah so just you know this for what it's worth you know stock up on these items and like think to replace them maybe and don't fry yourself like i did today yeah you Um, you know what it's funny because i'm always the burnt to the crisp human i told Soraya, she's like how's the suntan i said i didn't get burnt bobby did it's well, very rare. I usually that first really like good long day where we've got like the sun like really just cranking. Take it in. I get a burn and then I've got a nice base layer. I look like a freaking drug dealer. It's great. Yeah, look you at, do. Look at that. <laughs> My goodness. Wow. I should let's go buy a tractor. That is the <laughs> farmerist farmer the tan. God. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, no, I think I think that Janelle, I think that's a fantastic tip. Like you gotta you gotta dress for the elements. I know we've talked about this on the show before, but a good it is a good reminder, you Always. know, to consider like you're going out there and there's a lot at risk. You know, I mean, I think it's overlooked. Yeah. I think yeah. it really is. I agree with you. I use my sun gloves, my sun buff, and my you know performance shirt for both the cool weather and then the sun today. <laughs> like I didn't, you know what I mean? Like yeah. multi, you know, because it was windy yesterday and it was chilly. So I pulled that buff over my ears and over my face, helped me with the windburn, keep my ears warm. But then today it was sun protection because yep. the sun was so, you know, bright and predominant that like I didn't get burnt. Yep. My, uh, it's funny. So I'm a, so I'm a sun glove guy, and it's mostly oh, yeah. because my hands, like just you know from reeling, so like. You know, right here, oh, I know. right here on both hands, get Dude. fucking fried. That's great. Fried. There was there was one time it was so bad on I forget which hand it was, but like it like hurt to close it for like four days. Oh. So. Oh my wear. god, that bad? That's serious. Oh yeah, it was like it blistered. Oh, oh yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah. bad. I call that bait yeah. caster hand. You yes. know, because it's yep. when you're yep. holding the reel like that, you're exposing just that part. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. so and it just. Spinning. It, does not go no. away. No. It just no, doesn't so. go. God, dude, that's. Broad. I'm a sun glove guy now. Yeah, I should. I should be smarter. Much as my friends should. make fun of me, but I don't care. And you know what? I, I do want to say this too. There's a lot of people that have this idea that when you're all covered up with that performance gear, that like, oh yeah, you, you must be so hot. No. Like you know, you're not. That stuff dries and breathes so fast. Yeah. You're actually cooler than if you were yeah. wearing like cotton or something like that. Yeah, you know. 100%. It, 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 and the best part is with that shit is if you are hot, dip yep. it in the fucking water and put it back on. I oh my god, today. it's, it's great. amazing! I saw you. You said I was like, yeah. oh, it feels so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh I keep god. my gloves and my buff right in my um, my PFD, yeah. my life jacket. No. It zips right up. It's a good idea. No problem. It's always yeah. there. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So layer up, guys. Don't 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 be dicks. Don't be a know? jabroni. Yeah. Don't fuck around because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be bad. Now, uh, are you guys ready for this? This ought to be a good one. I don't know that we've had an FTG in a little bit, but uh, we got the the phone has been ringing, y'all. Uh, this week. We actually got two calls. One of those you're going to hear later this week, and, and it's actually is a little edit job I have to do because it's a it's a it's a torrid tale. This was a uh, an FTG that we uh, we got a little bit delayed, but it's by uh, my new good friend Matt from uh, Veterans Fishing. Uh, bumped into Matt when we were out uh, in uh, in on uh, Jordan Lake when I was out there with um, with Paul from Bass and Brews, the old jabber hammer, and uh, we got to talking there, and he hit me up and was like, "Oh my god, I got it." FTG, holy shit. And I said, dude, hit that hotline. Make it happen. So he did. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this with you guys, and then we can uh, we can converse afterwards. 
Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt from Veterans Fishing. As promised, here's my FTG uh, for this week. Uh, posted a reel about it. Guy on a jet ski that has a wicked loud exhaust of some kind. I'll break this down very simple. I'm all about freedom. Do what you want. You know, this is a free country. People are entitled to do that sort of thing how they want, when they want. That being said, nobody, and I mean nobody, is asking for loud exhaust on a jet ski. Okay? Cars. exhaust on a hot air balloon. This guy rode back and forth for like two straight hours giving everybody on the lake tinnitus. Nobody was wanting him to be there. You know you're the loudest dude. Get your jet ski on and get the fuck out of here. That's my take. Dude, I you got to see that reel that he's talking about. It is fucking loud. It sounds like a Harley. No bullshit. It sounds like a goddamn <laughs> Harley. Um I I just can't even imagine, dude, you know? Um so he um he had shared this information and there was a little cut out there. I'm going to go ahead and edit that, but if it it doesn't necessarily all go together, don't worry about it, guys. Um yeah, you know, and 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 Matt's right. He is all about freedom. Like he's it doesn't get more about freedom like than guys like Matt and you, Joe, and Sean. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, And he's like, do what you want. But it's true. Nobody wants that. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't understand it's that. It's like this. Take like... Take like... The most like... Vicious dog. But give it the voice box... Of a chihuahua. You know what I mean? It's just so annoying. and so freaking obnoxious. Um, I don't know. It's just a mess. So, um, let's see. We haven't had a broke on a boat in a couple of weeks, and now we do. And I think this is a good yep. one. So let's go. Let's go ahead and, and, and talk about this because this this is this is really good, and uh, I'm excited about it. Let's go ahead and dive in. Broke on the boat. It's time to go broke on the boat. Joe and Bobby's Guide to Fishing Your Funds Away. Oh, this ought to be so I'm never going to financially recover from this. It's true. I'm not ever going to financially recover from this, ever. Um, and I don't think I, I actually want to. Um, so this week, I was uh, I was on Fish Brain. You know, and I've, 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 we got a little segment coming up about Fish Brain in a future show. Because my relationship with Fish Brain has been rekindled. Um... But uh, I was on Fish Brain and I was looking around and I, I sent this to Joe actually and yeah, it was, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I mean it was really good. So the post was from a guy named Parker, and it was essentially what it was: should I buy this technique specific combo? Um, and I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to I'm going to I want to look at because I want to take a look at the pictures he did. It was a screenshot of his, and it was basically him talking about. Um, you know, uh, it was a flipping pitching combo specifically, you know, um, and we're talking, you know, technique specific, pretty technique specific. It was a Dobbins Champion XP flipping rod, and it was a Daiwa Tatula Elite pitch flip casting reel. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump in and, and say this. You know, I, I brought this up to Joe because I thought this would be a great conversation to talk about technique specific stuff. Like, there are people all the time that are like, you don't need technique specific stuff. And that's true. But I would also say if there is a technique that you genuinely love, right, catering some gear to be able to do that in the best way possible might give you the best experience doing that technique. And I would argue it would be a good move to put your investment in, in, in that that sort of corner. And I'll, I'll give an example right here. Um my buddy Paul, I talk about him all the time on the show. Paul loves a very, very specific technique. And when we were at the fishing expo, the New England Fishing Expo this last year, he went um, 
specifically looking to pick up a, a better spinning combo for finesse applications drop shots ned rigs things like that um the combo he was using before the rod he was using before was just way too like moderate way too whippy um you know he he was looking to get into something that had a fast or an extra fast tip um a little bit more length for better casting um and he found that rod and the the group that you know was selling the rods had a uh, a deal a show special like most do and i think it was like a buy one get one it was so he got he got another another uh, comp or he got another rod but i remember we were walking around he was like i'm not sure what i'm going to do if i'm going to buy this brand or if i'm going to buy this brand but he's like that 2 for 1 is pretty awesome i wonder what i should get now most of his rods are 7 foot medium heavies and he just uses that for like everything you know and hey that works for some people you know right um what he ultimately did was he uh he's like i'm not sure exactly what i should do and i was like well i go what do you do the most like sure what are you doing where it makes sense to get into something that's a little bit more unique are you into like crankbaits are you into square bills are you into are bladed jigs your thing you know mm -hmm. what would you do you know with that what are the the I guess the specs of that rod that you should be looking for. And he was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, really? You don't know? And I was like, what's that one bait I always bust your chops about throwing? He's like, <laughs> oh, whopper plopper. And I was like, you should get a topwater rod. Yep. I'm like, that's what you should do. You like throwing it. He was like, oh, maybe. I'll, he's like, what about another frog rod? And I was like, why Why would you need two? <laughs> you know, I'm like, this this way this way you could have a dedicated topwater rod where you've got mono on there and you're ready to go. You throw your whopper ploppers. You can throw a popper on that. You can throw a walking bait. You know, you, you pick a, a rod that's a length that you're, you know, luckily he's tall, so he can get away with using a slightly longer rod. I think he ended up getting a 6'10". Um, like a 6'10 medium heavy uh, with like a moderate action, like a moderate fast action. And uh, it, it's, you know, it's just kind of works for what he was looking for. He's like, well, these are, this, these, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And uh, I forget what he picked up for a reel. And he's already, he's, it was first week of April, he was already throwing a plopper. Hey, <laughs> have fun. But the, the reason why I endorse that is because like, it's, that's how he likes to fish. I think it's insane. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he that's just what he likes to do and the only way you're gonna catch fish is if you're doing what you want to do you know so that's like where it's hey you do you boo boo you I, know i wouldn't have murked you today if i didn't throw what i wanted to throw that's exactly it <laughs> yeah <laughs> he was like there's no way and i'm like okay and go no over there. no no no. i didn't say there's no way okay, i would never say there's no way what i did say was blah, the blah, likelihood blah. is not there and it's that's really what it is because everybody knows all the fish aren't doing the same thing yeah. you sure. know um so he you know to answer parker's question i think you absolutely should now that dobbins champion xp is is, is a nice rod it's a yeah it's a, it's a pricey pricey rod 270 270 yeah. for the rod 250 ah. for the reel no, yeah no, no, um no, no, no. i mean you're looking at a 500 hundred dollar combo um with that said like, I know that Daiwa's customer support is fantastic. Everything yep. I've ever heard from Daiwa fans, like, they love it. I also know that Dobbins has great customer support as well. And they're going to take care of you when you buy those higher tier rods. Right. This is a rod that you're going to have for a long time. You know, yeah. Uh, my vote is he should absolutely do it. And if it's in his ability to spend that money, why not? You know, yep. if he's going to put himself in the fucking poorhouse to do it, maybe you look at like a fury. Sure. Instead, yep. you know, maybe you make a change somewhere along the lines or you figure out yeah. what's important to you. What do you think, Joe? Yeah. So, I mean, Bobby, you know, you fished with me. I have probably 30 combos inside my locker in my in my boat mm -hmm. and I have a rod specific to every technique i use yeah um i don't use like i have if i decide not to throw a blade bait all year round then that rod won't get you won't get touched year. yeah it won't get touched it's like that's all that's ever tied on it 
Um, same thing with my everything, every everything from spinner baits to my yep. wacky Ned rigs, my you know jerk baits, jigs. They all have their own rod reel yep. setup. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so I mean, I agree. If if that's that's something that you do, if that's what you, if that's your end goal is to have specific you know rod reel combos for each technique, then yeah, absolutely, hundred sure. percent. Um. I mean, you're going right out and buying the Ferrari. Oh yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean. Which yeah. I think it, I, I think it's fucking awesome. Yep. Um, because you're gonna, it, it, those are the kind of things you'll have for a lifetime. Because those companies aren't going anywhere, and they'll always have your back. And yep. I know the Dobbins have the lifetime warranty. I don't know about the uh, Daiwa Tula um, Elites, but that's something you can have forever. Yeah. And. Are there other options out there? Oh, for 100%. sure. One hundred percent. Yep. One hundred percent. There's other options, but if you want the best right out the gate, then go for it, man. I think you're making a, a if if it's not if it's not going to stop your kids from eating for the week or the mortgage yeah. from being yeah. paid, yep. then fuck yeah, go for it, dude. Buy that thing and tell us how it is because it's a sick combo. Yeah, it is. It's a great fucking combo. And in fact, one of the comments on there was like that Dobbins Champion Rod, Champion XP is one of the best lines of fishing rod that's that's yeah. on the market. Like you're yeah. going to love it. And you know, there's a lot of assumption I think that comes with this post because he's like, "Should I buy this?" And some people might think immediately like He's not fish. He's never fished before. This is his first fishing rod. Why would he do? No, he posted this on Fish Brain. Clearly, he yeah. is fishing. Second thing is like right. maybe he's been pitching and flipping with a combo that's been fine and getting the job done. But yep. he's like, this is a technique I do a lot, and it would be sure. worth it, you know. Yep. So I say, I say absolutely, man. Just just go for it, you know, or piece it out if you have to. Now, what's interesting, Joe, and I think this goes to, to, to say with like a lot, like if I were in your situation where I was fishing out of that type of a vessel that you've got and the, yeah. the ab ability, I think that comes into. I think you'll find a lot of the the bass boat crowd. That will say like, yeah, I can put all of these things together. Why would I retie when I can grab yeah. to change from one yep. to the other? Now, when you're in a kayak, or even worse, is when you're on the bank, you've got to kind of plan out what rods can do what jobs. So that's sort right. of my take has always been: have a rod for like a spectrum. So this way, like you know, I have I, I do have some technique specific stuff. Like I have a dedicated jerk bait and topwater rod. You right. know. That was a relatively new purchase, actually. Um, I also have a dedicated swim bait rod for big swim baits, but that's because mm -hmm. I have swim baits that are like six or eight ounces. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it requires that. I have a carp rod with a bait runner. Um, I have a B, my BFS rod, you know. Um, yeah. Technique specific to a point, it's actually super versatile. But it's, yeah. there's a spectrum there. Like I, there's a lot of stuff that I can do with those combos, and you know, a lot of that I think goes into like the 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 vessel, like how you're out there fishing, what you're doing. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's like today I I done messed up, man. I only brought I I, I normally I can carry comfortably seven combos. I could put an I could carry eleven if I wanted to make it cramped and use my horizontal storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um I messed up today. I only brought out five. And okay. when I there was a part of me that was like when, when she started getting those those <laughs> fish off the spook, I was like Damn it. Do I go back and grab, you know, a plopper and and right. run it over the tops of these weeds and, yeah. and maybe do that? Like right. is that the move to do? And I mean, you know, I I I think I caught almost twenty fish today. You know, I didn't oh, I need at least, to. Yeah, yeah. It was it was nuts. There was really no need because the pattern was. It is it in the water? They're eating it. I mean, that's pretty yeah, much what it got yeah, down to. Yeah, but, but that's great. That's a so those are great opportunities. And this is kind yeah. of getting out of the broke on the boat. But those are great opportunities to gain confidence in baits. Yes, when they're yeah, those huge. days that yep. they're just fucking smash because it's a what <laughs> nine times out of ten when you're trying to gain confidence in a bait, it's all mental. Mm -hmm. It's all in your 100%. head. It's all, you know what I mean? So the, yep. those are the days where you're like, okay, I'm going to throw. I hate this bait. I've never caught anything on it. Let's throw it. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah. 
You're like, why Why not? There was a moment yep. today where I was like, oh, I forget what I was throwing. And I was like, let's just get weird. The wind kicked up a little bit, and I was like, let's get weird. I think I was throwing around a micro jig. You were. And I was catching them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, 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 it's windy. I kind of want to focus a little bit on bladed jigs just to see. Right. And I was like... You know, I'm I'm a little weary to throw some of those jackals because the ones that I bought at the in Columbus, I paid fifteen dollars a piece for. Yeah. Yeah. They are like throwing a jackhammer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's yeah. an eighth yeah. ounce and it's tiny. So I'm like, I just don't want to lose one and have to deal with it. Um, so right. I start throwing that around, and it, I wasn't getting bit at all. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to a bronco blade, and see what happens. And then boom, I was lighting them up. I think had I just stuck it out, I probably would have hooked connected with something. You know? Oh yeah. I well, think that's what it was. I think the funny thing is too is like, all of my confidence baits, aside from the top water, yeah, didn't produce for me today. My hmm, chatter bait, wild? chatter bait didn't work. Yeah. Beetle spin didn't work. Um, like an inline spinner, like a gold. Which is textbook yep. pickerel, didn't work. I was like, that's kind of how my day was too. Actually, now that I think of yeah. it, yeah, yeah, he's like throw anything. I was like, dude, I caught all my fish on that, on, and they didn't want a regular popper either. They wanted that walk <laughs> the dog. Yeah, well, and you were working that fast too. I was. Yeah, you, you were know working. What Jeremiah that real fast. was catching everything on. What's that? A fucking spy bait. <laughs> a spy bait. <laughs> spy bait. Really? Kids got class. Okay. He's like. He's like, I always want to throw one of these. I was like, go for it. Boom. Every cast, fucking crappie. No and way. Whatever yeah. else, yeah. That's that. fun. When crappie are hitting something like that, that's super fun. Yeah. Because they were huge. Yeah. yeah. They were big crappie. Dude, that's but, awesome. Yeah. Spy bait. Yeah, I would say when it comes to technique-specific stuff, if it's a technique that you love, mm-hmm. you should definitely do it. If it's something yep. that you want to get into, like the big swim bait stuff, and you've maybe never done it, or BFS, or you know uh, a totally different species like maybe you're gonna maybe you're looking to catch a hundred pound catfish do, you're not gonna do that on some of your bass <laughs> you're gonna no, need right. to up, upsize some stuff um you know it's I, I would say you know in that I- instance if you're just dabbling with something yeah look more yep. at like the budget end but look for the best value that you can get i love how jeff and paul from aggressively average anglers talk about this they're always bringing up value and that's a word that i think more people need to really start thinking about when it comes to buying any kind of gear like the value right. what is this actually giving me but if it's it sounds like this kid parker really wants to focus on flipping and pitching and he's probably already doing it like if this is something that you love go for it go ahead and buy it if it's one of your like shit buy two top two or three techniques that you go to yeah put the money into those setups yep 100 yeah. percent. and even if you do go for like the value version yeah and and you're like oh my goodness like this is you know i have to upgrade this okay well you have a good backup or one yep. that you can maybe try to sell or mm-hmm. pass down or just have it just in case something happens uh, that's to exactly the higher it. value yeah, setup. Yeah. Keep it in the car. Keep it in whatever. Like I said, uh, you've got it. You it's, know? It's, it's, it's bananas the way that, that it all works out. You know, it's funny. When I caught that 22 um, on Thursday, I realized this is the biggest fish that I had caught on that St. Croix Bass X that I had picked up. I picked this up, I think it was like last September or October. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Yep, and... Um, on that, I've got that with that Corrado uh, eight speed um, Corrado with, you know, and I'm like, that's probably like my most like priciest combo. I don't like yeah. to think of myself as like a bougie. Like I'm not, I'm not buying like you know G Loomis shit or anything like that. I got it steal with this, and I have been trying to hate that Saint Croix rod. I have, <laughs> I can't, yeah. I can't. You I can't. like it a lot. You know what I mean? I like it. And it's a perfect jig rod for what I'm doing. It's a 7-1 yep. medium heavy fast. And it's just the right amount of tip. It's like it's balanced nicely. Yep. Yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You are not I almost pressed it. <laughs> the, one, the one thing I will say, and I know I'm pretty sure at least you and I have talked about this, Bobby. The only yep. thing I don't like about that rod, I fucking hate cork. Oh, see, I'm cork. I'm an old school guy. Oh, I love cork. cork in your life. Hate Come cork. on. I hate cork. 
Hate it, hate it, hate it. I don't think I have one rod with cork on it. No, like it. None, huh? I, I'm like not it. super picky, but I'll tell you, I, I really like the aesthetic of cork. Mm -hmm. I just like the way it feels in my hand. I like the way yeah. it ages. EVA is fine, you know, definitely. There's plenty of that. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, there is. That's got some cork. Although, even my Arc Cobb series stuff, those have a little cork on them. I like cork for like trout stuff. I feel like trout gives me that old, it's like school, old yeah, that like, like old that school trout vibe, fishing. You know? I have a little cork yeah. on there. I could see that. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. could see the bushcrafty element there. Yeah. That was freaking awesome, man. Guys, I, th I think this is a, a great freaking show. We, we kind of nailed it. Um, Anyway, uh, let's before we wrap up, let's just let the listeners know if you guys like the kind of stuff that you're hearing right now and you want to be uh, a little bit more uh, dialed to what it is that we're doing, check out jigsandbigs.com. Uh, or if you're on, following us on social media, on Instagram or on Facebook, specifically on Instagram, our link in our on our profile is a link tree. There's all kinds of great information up there for you. Uh, some of our partners that we work with, we've got some promo codes with. You can save you some money on some really great stuff. I'm talking uh, Omnia Fishing. I'm talking Dark Horse Tackle. I'm talking Hookset Hoodlums, A Bay Lure Lab, Reaction Tackle. Uh, I mean, just the list goes on and on and on. So go check that stuff out. But you could also consider becoming a jig head. A jig head is simply a member of our Patreon. Uh, most shows, because we are live on location right now, and it's a little sketch in the parking lot of the Advance Auto Parts and uh, Joe Canal's Liquors. Yes, sir. Um, we're, you know, it's, it's a little dicey. S streaming this was a tough one, but most weeks we stream this to our patrons so that they can comment and engage and work with us and kind of like be a part of the show as we're creating it. And then, of course, we do have some merch available. Jigs and Bigs and Bobby Roast Beef merch available at jigsandbigs.com. Check it all out. we got great stuff. We've even got a Bluetooth speaker that you guys can pick up uh, and uh, and enjoy. Maybe even listen to the podcast while you're out on the water. Um, I think that about does it for all that. If, you're, if you are listening and you like the show, throw us a review on Apple Podcasts. Give us a star rating on Spotify. Those are our two primary uh, podcast platforms that people find us on. But we are available on a bunch more. Uh, and as always, uh, you know, just keep being awesome. And if you're posting fish pics on uh, on Instagram or on Facebook, tag us in those photos so that we can like, comment, share your stuff as well. We like to support you guys that are listening to our stuff and, and throw some stuff out there and, and give you guys, uh, you know, some of the, the credit you deserve for being amazing freaking anglers and just badass folks. And that's what we're all about here at Jigs and Bigs. Uh, also, remember, uh, if you go to the Jigs and Bigs uh links you can uh and right here in the description of the show there is a link for registering for the may uh jigs and bigs multi-species scavenger hunt series we got great prizes available for those that don't manage to grab a check so this could be pretty cool and the more people we have the more spots pay out so it's well worth jumping in gamify your fishing a little bit and have some fun you guys have anything you want to throw in before we uh we wrap this up uh uh Real quick, we yeah. didn't have a new segment. We didn't have a new segment this week. Hopefully, that'll be back. You guys, you know, I think we, I think we just been covering it real well, and there just wasn't really anything new out there to cover that I thought was worth covering. And I got to tease a little something, Bob. Oh, before tease we get it off. Tease it. Just, just a tease. No, go for it. <laughs> Everyone needs to be on the lookout in the next week or two for the new Fisher Die Ned Bait to drop. Oh yeah, dude, it's Ooh, sweet. Seen it. Bro. It's sweet. I've seen I've Taylor's seen been it. posting some good stuff too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's it's dope. It's gonna be awesome. And uh and you might see a little uh fish or die in a upcoming um dark horse tackle box, maybe. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Nice, very, so, very nice dude. It's saucy, I like it. Yeah, so that's it. I got those For gobies me. ready to go and Tuesday I might be throwing them. There you go. I might be th I might be throwing them with this spot I'm looking at. We'll see how we do. How about you, Janelle? You got anything you want to tease any of any of your Where can folks find you? Folks can find me at Enthusiast Adventurer on Instagram and YouTube and the Adventures Audio Podcast over on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. I love that. Uh, the uh, bus conversion that I'm doing is very close to being street legal, which means travel is going to be happening. So get ready for that content. If you guys are into it, please come over and uh, say hi. Give us a like, follow, and... Yeah. I love that. 
That's awesome. Guys, like we always say, uh, make sure you know, make sure that you're tagging us in your stuff. You guys are awesome. We have the best listeners and the best uh, followers of any uh, podcast that's out there, fishing or otherwise. I'll put money against that, like even against Joe Rogan. Um, ooh, yeah, ooh, that's ooh. a big statement. I think our I think our listeners are, are primo. I think yeah. they are great folks, and uh, we appreciate you guys checking out this podcast each and every week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this sucker up, guys, and call it because we have a campfire to get started. I have my I, this is this is like time number three. I'm making this pasta dish while camping. So are you ready to eat? Dude, the charcuterie's coming back out. The pasta, the stogies. I'm so wine. I am so ready for tonight. It's game on. Yes, sir. I wish you could be here, Joe. We yeah, got to plan a trip know. with you, dude. We got to plan a trip with you. I, know. I got I know. the camping gear. Like we can bunk. It'll be awesome. Bunk you know, we, we don't have to play big spoon, little spoon in the forerunner. Oh. Like we could. No, I'll sleep in my rod box. Con- <laughs> I'll sleep in my. <laughs> be good content. <laughs> I just sleep, Joe. Better than sleeping in that fucking <laughs> tent with that farting bearded bastard. Oh my goodness. Coming out, coming out like fucking Dracula. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is a great story that Alex Rudd told on our show about, and I say this because it's about a rod box, um, where he was out fishing. He was like ten years old with his dad. And yeah. I guess there was a storm that rolled in, and his dad stuffed him in the rod box, and like <laughs> fucking gunned it like tornadoes and shit. Oh my god! And oh, no it was shit. like, oh yeah, it was sketchy. He was like, dude, I've never been more afraid in my life. It was crazy. He was he was little too. He was like, yeah, yeah, was yeah. Like, Holy shit! It's a different time, wasn't it? It really, really yeah, was. We gotta was. get back. We gotta get him back on the show too. He he was a fun yeah. co-host. Yeah. Um, and then we also have we should mention too that we do have Josh Codier. Joining yep. us in an upcoming episode, and you're going to hear a lot more from yep. Josh too. Um, he's got a lot of great, great info and uh, perspective that I think you guys would love. He's a hardcore tournament angler; like yes, he, he lives, breathes, eats, and shits this stuff. It's yep. awesome. I love it. I'm always trying to pick his brain, but he's always a little quiet because he's, we do fish against one another. Yes, oh, and, and yeah. I can totally understand that. I it's yep. it's it's different when it's. You and I are just goofing off, having mm-hmm. some fun, enjoying mm-hmm. this. It's different when there's money on the line. People get really serious about it. It's oh, true. My yep. dad's funny. There's no money on the line. He'd be like, lay the rods down. There's a boat coming. Lay it down. No oh, boat. yeah. I'm like, Dad, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so They're going to get our fish. Yeah, don't show them that. Dang Hide it. it. Hide it. Oh, all righty, guys. We're going to wrap this sucker up. Go handle all of our stuff. We will see you next week with more Jigs and Bigs goodness. Don't you guys forget it. Like we always say, it's an ass. <laughs>